Hello, it's Tuesday, January the 12th here in Vietnam, and you are in for 30 minutes of VTV News live at 3 p.m. local time. My name is Lenning, and here are what we have in store for you. Bloomberg experts say that Chinese uh, economic slowdown has little impact on Vietnam. Vietnam to further tighten state budget spending to address concerns of long-term debts. And Little Hue Citadel attracts tourists with more sites being restored and reopened to the public. Now starting off this bulletin, China's economic expansion has been a powerhouse for regional and global growth, boosting other countries' economies through the demand for commodities and other imports. Now the reverse is happening, a slowdown is dragging down growth across the region. However, Vietnam is said to be among the countries less affected by China's economic slowdown. Here's why. China's benchmark Shanghai Stock Index closed down more than 5 percent on Monday, the lowest over the last four months. After enjoying some minor relief on Friday, the region's trading floors were once again swathed in red. According to estimates from Australia and New Zealand Banking Group, a percentage point fall in China's economic growth subtracts 0.2 percentage points from Vietnam, while comparatively Indonesia loses 0.3 percent, Thailand 0.4 percent and Malaysia 0.5 percent, while Singapore being the worst hit with the 1.4 percent loss. China will grow 6.7 percent this year. The World Bank forecast last week down from an estimated 6.9 percent in 2015. The seven top UK financial technology forums have come to Vietnam to exchange their experiences as well as seek for business opportunities. At a financial technology seminar held this morning in Hanoi by the British Embassy, the forums presented a range of financial technology solutions such as cross-border payments, community fundraising and data analysis for risk management. The UK ambassador to Vietnam, Giles Lover, said that Vietnam's financial market market is developing rapidly, uh, though it will be benefited more by applying these modern technologies. In addition, with 23 million smartphones and 55 million mobile subscribers, Vietnam's e-commerce market is attracting a number of UK businesses. However, Vietnam's current e-commerce sector accounts for only 1% of the retail market, compared with 8% in China. The UK firms will stay in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City until January the 15th. In other news, according to the government's report on state budget's balance, revenue reached 45 billion US dollars, 11 percent up on the set target. Meanwhile, budget's deficits was capped at 10 billion, equivalent to 5 percent of GDP. Now, despite this achievement, the Ministry of Finance intends to further tighten fiscal discipline, especially in a state budget spending, as part of efforts to address any concerns over long-term debts. The report showed that the state budget deficit over the 2011-2015 period was maintained at around 5% of GDP. The rising state deficit was partially attributed to the government's policies to stimulate investment and consumption, in addition to the impact of the domestic and global economic cycle. The use of the state budget has not been controlled. Many fears are prone to corruption and wastefulness. In the coming time, attention must be paid to intensifying supervision to ensure transparency in the use of the budget and cutting unnecessary and ineffective expense. Many experts have suggested that one of the sustainable solutions to reduce pressure on the budget deficit would be to enable more public-private partnership projects which will reduce budget spending. Since 2009, the government has implemented many policies to support businesses. However, many firms have not fully recovered 
and are facing financial difficulties. Therefore, public-private partnerships enable businesses and should have the efficiency of the projects. Under the context of comprehensive economic restructuring, how to attract investment from private and foreign sectors remain a big question. Therefore, policies and mechanisms should be implemented in a way that encourage investors and create momentum for them to play an active role in the restructuring process. The Ministry of Finance will issue various policies to facilitate the development and sustainability of the market, including encouraging investment from abroad. At the same time, Vietnam will simplify its administrative procedures to enable more foreign investors to operate in Vietnam, particularly in buying shares from equitized state-owned enterprises. Now, despite the overall growth in Vietnam's real estate market in recent time, there are still underlying risk. This is according to recent analysis from economic experts in the sector. Now, compared to 2014, there has been a 5 to 6 percent increase in real estate prices. A number of projects in the luxury apartment segment saw a 10 to 15 percent price increase. A strong surge was seen in Ho Chi Minh City's secondary market and luxury apartment segment, with the number of investors increasing threefold. However, behind these outwardly optimistic signs are also risks, primarily posed by people taking high interest loans from unreliable sources to uh, speculate on the market. This has the potential to cause instability in the real estate market. In a bid to ensure security at key defensive zones, Da Nang City's People's Committee has recently established a joint working group between the city's army and police force. Now, the group's mission is to assess uh, construction projects conducted within or around the boundaries of defensive zones, projects in areas of important works relating to national security and projects potentially affecting national defense and security. Established under the city's Department of Construction, this group will evaluate the quality of investment projects, the composition of investors, investment capacity, and examine the impact of the projects that may concern national security and defense. Now, economic zones in the central province of Thừa Thiên Huế attracted 99 investment projects in 2015, including 75 domestic and 24 foreign projects, with total registered investment investment capital of 1.05 billion US dollars. Now, these projects have created jobs for 18,000 workers in the province and neighboring regions. The province's total industrial production value in 2015 reached 535 million US dollars, uh, 109.4% of the province's annual target, contributing more than 78 million US dollars to the state budget. The province aims to raise this industrial production value by 10% this year to more than 588 million US dollars. Now, a project titled a Forestry Development Project was uh, launched over the period from 2005 to 2015 in six uh, central provinces. Now, with support of the World Bank, Holland and Finland uh, government, Global Environment Fund and European Union, the project has proved a positive result in the central province of Thừa Thiên Huế in terms of both incomes and the environment. The forestry development project has run in five districts in Totonu province. 9,300 households have received support to plant 13,800 hectares of forest, helping improve their incomes. In 2009, my family joined the project. We don't have to pay land use right fees. We also get training to grow trees properly, so we have better incomes. In the project, 130 groups of households were formed to provide support in techniques and market research. 22 households with 260 hectares were provided forest certification. Nearly 9,000 households have received forest land use certificates. Thanks to the project, each hectare has tripled their financial returns. 
After the project was launched, it has brought about economic benefits to involved households. It also helps protect the environment. Besides creating jobs and stable incomes, the project has contributed to reducing soil erosion and increasing forest cover. With positive results, the Dunhui's authorities intend to call for the participation of 20 more households across 220 hectares. The new style cooperatives have heightened the competitiveness of agro products and promoted better links between farmers and businesses. This has been achieved partially through the promotion of fresh local produce, which meets national and international demand. The following story has more. This event, first held in Ho Chi Minh City, intends to introduce fresh produce from the Cooperatives Union of Southern Vietnam. Joining the event, the head of Xuân Đình Commune, Đồng Nai Province said, the event was an opportunity to widely promote prominent local agro products. More sales mean more money going to the pockets of farmers. We are trying to provide fresh and safe agro products with high output to meet customer demand. Scores of high-quality certified agro products from cooperatives in 14 southern provinces were on display. I hope more fresh agro products fair will be held so I can buy these safe vegetables. For the six months ago, this cooperative has linked 1,000 households together based on the Vietnamese good agricultural practices standards. More than 500 households are set to join in 2016, with an expected output of 30,000 tons. In 2016, we aim to export 15,000 tons of agricultural products to Japan, South Korea and Europe. To tap these new cooperatives and benefit from global integration, the Vietnam Cooperative Alliance will enter into partnership with credit institutions while working with researchers to support farmers in assessing capital and new technology. In other news, the Vietnam National Power Transmission Corporation on Monday morning held a conference to review its work last year and to implement strategies for 2016. The corporation raised finance for over 200 projects with total value of nearly 3.5 billion US dollars. Among these, domestic sources provided 1.5 billion US dollars and the remainder from foreign sources. In 2015, the corporation completed a several vital 500 100 kilovolt projects, enhancing supply capacity of the southern grid. The rate of power losses has been reduced by 0.78% since 2010 and is expected to decline to 1.8% by 2020. And in the following, we give you the latest updates on the foreign exchange rates between Vietnamese dong and some major currencies around the world. Next on VTV News, Vietnamese crewmen rescued a drifting Chinese fisherman. And later, Hue Citadel attracts tourists with more sites being restored and reopened to the public. You're tuning in to VTV News Live. Now, Vietnamese crewmen hailing from the southern province of Guangbing on Monday rescued a Chinese fisherman. The crew of a QB93985TS was operating 94 nautical miles from Honla Island with seven fishermen on board, led by Captain Nguyen Van Ho. They found a drift sting fisherman. The crew rescued the man, the man and took him to Gangzheng border guards. The survivor was identified as being Su Ji Li from Fujian province, China. 
The province border command has cared for the men while coordinating with local authorities to return the fishermen to China. <laughs> The Center for Research and Production of Vaccines and Medical Bioproducts has started a pilot run for the IPOVAC polio vaccine on 240 children from 10 communes in the northern province of Futa. Now, the pilot follows the vaccine successful test on 60 adults and clinical trials on animals. The children will be injected three doses of polio vaccine IPOVAC with each a month apart. Now, each child will receive three blood tests to check their immune reactions. If the tests are successful, the vaccine will continue to be given to 1,000 children. It is expected that the IPOVAC polio vaccine will be available for sale by 2018. In related news, the National Center for Coordinating Human Organ Transplants this morning announced a record number of people who have agreed to donate their organs after death and brain death. Now, specifically, 3,542 people have registered to donate their organs. The call for organ donors has been launched across 17 provinces across Vietnam. According to statistics, only 308 patients have received transplants from 37 donors. In fact, the number of donors is still much lower than the number of patients in need. Since 1992, 16 medical units have carried out organ transplants. The National Center for Coordinating Human Organ Transplants are now still calling for organ donations to help patients in need. The government is working on improving the quality of university education so that students receive value from their educations and businesses can benefit from better qualified workers. The head of Vietnam Initiative Program in the U.S. has given these proposals as part of this discussion about uh, to raise the quality of university education. The following story has more. <laughs> The Vietnamese Young Leader Scholarship is a program organized by the Ministry of Education and Training and Vietnam Initiative in the U.S. The scholarship is aimed to improve the quality of staff and has been running for two years. Students are still afraid of making mistakes, although they know the answers. So they need to be encouraged to express their opinions, even if they're not right. Social skills are still one of their weaknesses because they learn and work in an environment in which they don't have to speak in front of large audiences and interact with many people. Trần Ngọc Anh graduating from Harvard University is one among 10 members of the Education Dialogue Group. According to the group, the four factors that go towards ensuring a quality university education are quality testing, ranking and comparisons. There should be more practical lessons for students. Information disclosure is also crucial. There needs to be a survey about the proportion of graduates who can find a job after six months and how much their salary is. The survey will give students information to choose appropriate university and also boost competition among universities. According to Chen Ngoc Anh, financial investment is obviously essential in attracting better teachers, which has an impact on teaching quality. Now more news about education. National Economic University has received a Young Talent Scholarship worth about $1.3 million from Vin Group. Now the scholarship will provide course fees for third and fourth year students who have excellent academic results, entrepreneurial talent and disadvantaged students. Students have an opportunity to gain practical experiences in the corporation's working environment. This is the first joint program between an economics university City and a private company in the country. Now, not all little is simple rubbish. This is the main message sent to tourists to raise awareness about environmental protection on a tourist island of the southern central coastal province of Khainhua. Let's take a look. This is one of the most attractive destinations at Monkey Island. All the litter that tourists have left behind has been collected and classified here. 
Thanks to these people, what was one simple rubbish used to create pieces of art. We came up with ideas ourselves, which is collect the litter, and then shape them into different things. It always feels good after doing this. 200 pieces of art have been created for the past two years. These two beautiful peacocks are made from 12,000 used bottles. This forest is made from coconut shells. This garden is made from plastic bottles. All of these not only create an impression, but also highlight the correct disposal of rubbish. Dumping or burning rubbish is still polluting the environment. That's why we decided to find a way to make things out of the litter. The environment is the main reason that keeps visitors continue to return to Monkey Island. Through original artwork from waste, the need to protect the environment is made clear. Now, in recent years, many of Hue's historical sites have been restored and reopened to welcome tourists. Beside the royal tombs, which are very popular with tourists, the opening of several royal palaces has attracted tourists thanks to their intriguing anecdotes. Let's visit those sites in the following story. Chengseng Palace is located in the northwestern corner of the citadel. It was built during the reign of King Mingmang, who reigned between 1820 and 1841, functioning as a royal flower garden for his mother's leisurely strolls. Since its opening, this space has become an attractive destination for tourists. I had been to Hue a few years ago. This time, my family chose Hue Citadel as our first stop. I feel so excited to visit many other interesting places, such as Chiang Sang and Xiantok palaces. These palaces help us understand more about the lives of the queens. I was impressed by the outside. I have heard of it a lot, but this is the first time I see it in person. I will buy outside as souvenirs for my sister. Visiting Chiang Sang Palace, tourists have the chance to enjoy royal tea in a cozy atmosphere or put on beautiful outside designed in historical, old-fashioned style. After being restored, places like Xiantok Palace, Bing Andung, the Gung Memorial House have become attractive destinations for tourists. Hue's palaces have unique features. Our duty is to restore the heritage, but to maintain its spirit and soul as well. In 2015, Hue welcomed about 2 million tourists, achieving a record 9 million dollars in revenue. Due to the high-quality services offered by travel agencies, the number of tourists visiting the palaces of the Nguyen Dynasty's Queen Mothers has increased significantly. We have cooperated with travel agencies to offer tourists the best services. We are working to introduce the beauty of this palace at night. They are really beautiful. The operation of new tourist destination is seen as highlights of Hue historical site, contributing to the development of Hue's tourism. Now more in the central province of Thừa Thiên Huế, in order to raise students' awareness and heighten the responsibility to preserve national heritage, Huế Department of Education and Training has put a royal dance into the school curricular with the support of the Huế Monuments Conservation Center. We have more in the following story. Once every week, the royal dance class always brings excitement to the pupils at Gu Cheng Primary School in Huong Thuy Town, Thu Thien Hue Province. This is the first primary school in the province to ever bring royal dance into the curricula of grade 4 and 5. Today that I'm able to practice dancing, I feel very happy. Traditional games and folk songs have been included in students' extracurricular activities in accordance with the local educational program. Since 2012, the Royal Music and Dance Promotion Project has been implemented in many primary schools, where students are taught different court dance styles directly by members from the Hui Royal Traditional Arts Theatre. We've tried bringing the dance into school curricula to raise the love and awareness for this art form among students. 
về cái loại hình văn hóa của Việt Nam. Với mục đích là nhằm We've put Huế folk and imperial cult songs into the local educational software. Currently, ceremonial music is being taught in Guchang Primary School. It's a good way to preserve and promote Huế culture among students. Students, the future generation of Vietnam, are the ones who will continue the preservation and promotion of Huế Imperial Palace's culture. Putting royal dance into the school curriculum helps facilitate this mission by allowing them to have a better understanding of this cultural art form. And coming up next is our updated weather forecast for some selected cities in Vietnam and around the world. And that wraps up VTV News at this hour. It's great to have you along. Now check out VTV4.vn or YouTube.com slash VTV4Go for repeats of our bulletins. I see you back at 6 p.m. Hanoi time. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.